Born on October 17, 1926 in Ohio, Carl Gordon was raised outside of Cincinnati on a small dairy farm overlooking the Miami River. He lost his father at a very young age, and so he and his younger brother looked after the farm. Among his interests were home computers, mathematics, and astronomy. He also loved racquetball, baseball, skin diving, and mountain climbing. Carl's life was full of success and ambitions. He achieved what he always dreamt of, but unfortunately, climbing Mount Everest successfully was not something he could attain. Despite that, he remained one of the most important personalities of his time. His work and contributions to astronomy have been unbelievable. From 1974 through 1978, Hanese worked for the NASA Facility Definition Team for Starlab. From 1978 to 1980, he was a chairman of the NASA Working Group for the Space Lab Wide Angle Telescope. He has been the head of the International Astronomical Union Working Group for Space Schmidt Surveys since 1979, and he was a major force behind the notion of conducting a thorough full-sky far ultraviolet survey with a one-meter all-reflecting Schmidt telescope. At age 58, he went on the first and only mission of his life to space. He was on board the Space Shuttle Challenge. With this, he became the oldest American astronomer to fly in space. He ran a robot arm, tested and managed the instrument pointing system, and carried out numerous scientific investigations. In 1986, he stopped working as an astronaut and became a senior scientist at the Space Sciences Branch. He investigated risks to the space station and trash in space. This was a time when he decided to pursue his long lost dream of becoming a mountaineer. He had a veil this time, making himself mentally and physically ready for all kinds of situations he might encounter while summoning mountains. He started with Mount Rainier. In 1991, he, along with an expedition team, summited Mount Rainier successfully in Washington. This increased his urge and longing to climb Mount Everest. He was in contact with many of the expedition teams by then and fully intending to climb Everest and complete his research. And then in 1993, he found a British expedition and started preparing for the climb with them. At the age of 66, climbing a mountain and that also Mount Everest was not a piece of cake, but Carl was bent on doing this and he had achieved everything in life, but not this. He was in high spirits, as shared by Mr. Carr, one of his colleagues, but this was an attempt that happened to be the first and last attempt to reach K2. This was the story of Carl Gordon Hanes who intertwined his astronomy and mountaineer life and was the most inspiring person of his time. It was around 1993, September, when Carl Gordon Hanes was on leave from NASA. He decided to participate in the expedition, which was an invitation by the British team. Even though Carl was a scientist, his love for mountains could not be hindered. Carl Gordon Hanes had another lifelong dream to conquer the world's highest peak, Mount Everest. He yearned for its unique perspective the sense of triumph and the challenge it posed. This dream to climb mountains nourished Carl's life from childhood. Sir Edmund Hillary, who was the first person in the world to climb Mount Everest, was his ideal. He looked up to him and knew that one day he would be doing the same. But this was not it. Climbing Mount Everest, the reason for joining his expedition was to show TEPC. Hanese intended to test a tissue equivalent proportional counter, TEPC, at three distinct altitudes first at 17,000 feet, then at 19,000 feet, and at 21,000 feet. The TEPC would offer information on how people's bodies would react to radiation exposure, specifically how bodily tissues would function, which is critical for planning long-duration space missions. After collecting this data from the Everest peaks, he intended to deliver it to NASA and BVI. So Carl was going on this expedition for all these reasons. He traveled to Tibet in the mid of September to join his team, and they planned to climb the north face of the Mount Everest. They started this expedition on October 4th, 1993. Now you might be thinking that it would have been a long expedition or it may have occurred that he almost reached the peak of Everest, but it never happened. While the expedition team was getting ready to begin their journey, Carl was slow but steady. He was not really in a good position to climb the highest peak of the world. But as he wanted to research and contribute to the NASA and Astronaut Society, he had to do it. Before this expedition, he worked hard on his health. Hanese trained extensively, preparing physically and mentally for the daunting task of climbing Everest. His dedication and tenacity were unparalleled, but little did he know 
that his dream would ultimately become a heartbreaking tragedy. Before starting the journey, Haniz adjusted to his surroundings, first in Kathmandu, Nepal, and subsequently at the expedition base camp in China. Haniz and three other High Adventure BVI members began the summit challenge on October 4, 1993. Hopes were high as the astronauts and the scientists, who were Carl's companions, were all hoping for Carl to bring something back from Everest, and if he would be successful in doing that, he would become the hero. The first day of the summit went pretty well, as all of them were in good condition. They covered more than 2,000 meters in one day. At night, they decided to rest by camping at some safe place. The next morning, they started their ascent again. The weather was beginning to grow cold and colder minute by minute. The climbers tried to keep them warm with a few minutes break from time to time. After a few feet of their walk, Carl started feeling unwell. He started showing signs of high altitude sickness. He was feeling nauseated and was under the impression of a bad headache. His lungs began to fill with blood plasma. Around this time, they were at 22,000 feet, just near the advanced base camp. He was unable to move ahead and he had no energy to move back to the base camp. They were stuck in between with the cold wind blowing harshly. The British research group did their best to help Carl with oxygen treatments, but to no avail. Then they moved him back to the base camp as it would be impossible for him to move ahead now. So they reached the base camp on 5th October, and there they decided to let Carl rest. And if he feels better in a day or two, they would again start their journey to climbing Everest. But this couldn't happen, as Carl was sleeping in the base camp. He died. Yes, it was in his sleep that he took his last breath at around 1 a.m. He died just 12 days before his 67th birthday. The news of his death did not arrive at his home until four days later. The wife and the children were in extreme shock as this was a loss they could never recover. There could be several reasons for his death, but most of the doctors say that Carl died because of high altitude pulmonary edema, HAPE. He is now buried in the Chainstie Glacier, which is on the north side of Mount Everest. It was his last wish to be buried in the mountains, and he got it.